This is a rather sad story, a, 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 an unfortunate thing to witness. Prince Harry, once the most popular royal, who clearly cannot stop picking away at the emotional scabs that he feels that have been inflicted on him. Um, on the other hand, I cannot understand why his lawyers ever allowed him to go into court on this, because on the face of it so far, he's doing rather badly, and I, I, I cannot see how he's going to win this one unless he can link a specific story to a specific piece of illegal activity on behalf of Mirror Group newspapers. And, and the parallels being drawn by Andrew Green that was in the, the case of uh, News Group, there were, there were phone records, there was, there was hard evidence in terms of uh, what had been intercepted or allegedly intercepted. That's missing this time round. Yes, absolutely. And there isn't a single uh, example that I've heard anyway uh, that suggests that there is any evidence that um, illegal action was taken. I think there's also the broader fact that uh, Prince Harry himself has been found to have got some of his evidence wrong, or at least misconstrued evidence. And uh, in his own book, the, uh, the Autobiography Spare, I think that it's fair to say, as um, some have already pointed out, that if there's anyway, any intrusion into other people's privacy, Spare was a ran a, a, a truck through the uh, uh, royal family's private lives. So it's, it, it's somewhere, I, I think that the big problem for Harry is that the sympathy that I think was there for him from the beginning has almost totally evaporated and this court case is not helping at, at all. Really? You, you don't think that there's a reassessment by some people when they've learnt, you know, he's had his day in court, what he's had to live through for, what, these decades and, and the intrusion uh, into his uh, private life, even though it may not be um, unlawful or illegal? Well, I think that the, the sympathy for him on that score is, is, is abundant, but it's mitigated, <laughs> excuse me, it's mitigated by the fact that he himself has gone out on television and in his memoir uh, to reveal things that the public, the royal family, the public never knew about the royal family's most intimate secrets. So it's very difficult to balance that. And I think that uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg made a very good point in his summary of this, his editorial on his show last night, that this is the freedom of the press, which is uh, being challenged here. Freedom of the press is also free speech, and without it, we are not a democracy. And to suggest that uh, the uh, bloody fingers, the fingers covered in blood that type these stories is uh, an outrageous slur on decent journalists around the world. And if there were to come out, if there were to be any measure which uh, followed the uh, clear uh, wishes of this, uh, of, this uh, uh, of, the Prince, of Prince Harry, it would mean that there'd be restrictions on the freedom of the press. And I think that would be totally unacceptable. Do you think he was treated decently by the British press? No, I think that to be fair to him, and I think that that's where the reservoir of public sympathy would be if he, if he hadn't uh, rather damaged it himself. I think that everybody would see that this, uh, 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 after all, he was a boy of 14, yeah, uh, yeah. younger than that. Uh, and uh, he was hounded by the press at the time in ways which would be intolerable now, and it simply wouldn't happen in this day and age. But right throughout his life, I think that he's been the subject of intrusion, which has been, um, which was unforgivable and remains unforgivable.